Hey, Fortnite fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Chat Sports, and today, let's go ahead and take a look at all the latest San Francisco 49ers news and rumors, starting with something that happened a couple of months ago, but we're just finding out about it, and that is the restructuring of Kwan Alexander's contract. So, Kwan Alexander has completely restructured his deal, and he did it without us knowing back in November. Here's the deal he converted a lot of his overall money to a signing bonus, which basically makes him you still get the same amount of money, but it converts it to a different way to work the cap space, aka, again, it's all jargon, but basically it, it creates $10 million of available free cap space for the 49ers to add on to what they have right now going into the 2020 offseason. So essentially, what I'm saying is, the Niners just went from $21 million in free cap space to $31 million in free cap space, which means they could be able to sign more of their free agents, maybe even dip into other teams' free agents and get some additional weapons for our 49ers. Now, also, I just want to mention this, Weston Richburg also redid his deal as well. So people restructuring their deals, this happens a lot in the National Football League, but if it converts the money to bonus money, meaning helps out with the overall cap space, which is great news for Eric Armstead, Jimmy Ward, and Emmanuel Sanders, the 49ers' three biggest free agents. We were wondering, could you keep one of them, two of them? Definitely not all three of them, right? Well, maybe now you might be able to re-sign all three. Now, this doesn't fully, you know, guarantee they're going to go out and re-sign all three of them, but at least convinces me that they're going to get at least one, right? Because, I mean, Emmanuel Sanders and Eric Armstead could easily have walked because the Niners could not have afforded both of them, but now, with about $30 million in free cap space, these guys are a lot more likely to go ahead and re-sign re with the 49ers. So, thank you very much, Kawan Alexander, for taking one for the team, even though he didn't really lose any money, but overall, restructuring his contract to go ahead and help with our free agent additions. Alexander played well this year, and whenever he was out there, obviously, he had the torn pectoral, fought through it, played in the postseason, an absolute grinder, and he signed for the next couple of years, which means 49ers uh, linebacking core, rookie Greenlaw, obviously Fred Warner, Kawana, I mean, this is one of the best linebacking cores in the National Football League, and now, hopefully, with some additional money, they could go out and re-sign all of their free agents and make another run at the 2021 Super Bowl. Quick ad break here on YouTube, let the ad run, answer the question down below, which of these free agents is the biggest one the 49ers have. Who's the most important guy? They have to resign. There'll be a pinned comment down below. I want to see your answers. I'll be reading them. All right, so how about some more news that has not been widely reported? A lot of you guys might not realize that Robert Sala, our defensive coordinator, was talked to by the Michigan uh, State Spartans about becoming their new head coach. So Sparty, of course, is having all sorts of lawsuits. Mike D'Antonio went ahead and stepped down. They need a new football coach. And they reached out to Robert Sala, our defensive coordinator, and they said, hey, you want to come in for an interview? We'd love to have you as our new head coach. And Sala has officially, as of this week, declined the job interview. He is staying with San Francisco for the foreseeable future. Excellent news here for our 49ers. Remember, Sala had interviewed for the Cleveland Browns job. Actually went and did that interview, and then they went with Kevin Stefanski, the offensive coordinator from the Minnesota Vikings. So this is just great news overall that, one, teams think he's that good to be interested in him, not just Cleveland, but also Michigan State. And two, he turns them down and stays with San Francisco for at least one more year. Eighth in points per game was his defense. Second in yards, first in passing, and 17th against the run. They were as elite of a defensive unit as we've possibly seen. And if you ask any of the players in that locker room why they are that good, number one is Robert Sala. This is a this is a legitimate head coaching candidate of the future. He will be a head coach at some point in the next, I'd say two to three years. The fact we get to keep him for one more year going into the 2020 season is an absolute steal for our San Francisco 49ers because Kyle Shanahan has said, John Lynch said it last week, listen, any time we get with him going forward is is borrow time. We're lucky to have him because this guy will be an, a head coach in the league sooner rather than later. Think Vic Fangio with the um, with the Bears as he was the head coach or the defensive coordinator for Chicago and then became the head coach of Denver. That was about a one to two year little swing. This could be very similar with Robert Sala. So not to be a Debbie Downer, he is going to leave. We understand that. But the fact that he declined Sparty, the Browns didn't take him, means we get him for at least 2020. So if you want to reload, go for it again. Go back-to-back -back Super Bowls. And the, the Niners have a real shot of having everybody return, at least the majority of their players return for the 2020 season. And Sala, the coach, returns as well. Interesting question here. How many more years will we get Robert Sala on our, uh, as our defensive coordinator? Type 1 for one year. Type 2 for two years. Type 3 for three years down below. I don't think it'll be three years, but you could type it down below if you guys think that it would be. Before we move on, I was reading the comments just the other day, and someone said, hey, the XFL's here. 
Can we use BetDSI to bet on, any, on excuse me, the XFL? The answer is yes. Our friends at BetDSI will let you bet on almost every major sport. Chatsports.com forward slash bet. Use the promo code 49ers. You get 120% deposit bonus. So if you like those uh, Dallas defenders or DC defenders, Dallas Renegades, you want to bet on them, go to Chatsports.com forward slash bet. Use the promo code 49ers. Put 100 bucks down. Turns into $220 whenever you first sign up. Also, moving on, we talk a lot about Jimmy Garoppolo criticism here. Are you tired of the Jimmy Garoppolo criticism? I'm not, because I think it's stupid, and so I like to rebuttal people. So I'm not tired of it yet, but it gets a little bit annoying overall. How about Kyle Shanahan coming through and defending his quarterback yet again? Look at this quote from Kyle Shanahan. They said just the other day about Jimmy Garoppolo. It's a little long, but I want to read it for you guys. This is, this is, this is the ultimate indication that they are not going to get Tom Brady. They're not going to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. He's the quarterback of the future. Quote, I think Jimmy is one of the main reasons we got to the Super Bowl. I think he overcame a lot. This was his first year in his career going through an entire NFL season. He still doesn't have as many starts as Baker Mayfield. I think he had a hell of a first year truly playing the position, especially coming off an ACL where you have to fight through a ton as a quarterback, where your rhythm and everything is not there at the beginning of the year. Now, you could be listening to this and going, Thomas, I know Jimmy G is the quarterback. Why are we talking about this? Because scroll down on any of the last couple of videos we've done here at Chat Sports, and people are ripping Jimmy Garoppolo in the comments. You know who you are, right? You might be commenting right now. Jimmy Garoppolo sucks. No. He's going to be the quarterback of the future. Kyle Shanahan has defended him. John Lynch has defended him. The players have defended him. Some of the Chiefs even came out and defended him, saying, yeah, he's a pretty good quarterback overall. So enough with that hate. I just wanted to update you guys in terms of uh, what Kyle Shanahan was saying about old Jimmy Garoppolo. He's the quarterback of the future. You've seen his stats. He was fine. He got it to the Super Bowl. And again, they're reloading on all majors. I mean, if they, they get Armstead, Sanders, and Jimmy Ward back, and they keep solid like they're going to, and they draft well, and maybe a little bit of free agency. This is just a reloading of a team that's only going to be better as they mesh more together going into the 2020 season. We can do more things together as well. If you subscribe to the 49ers Report here on Chat Sports, fastest growing 49ers channel, the best 49ers channel here on YouTube. Click the red subscribe button. We'd greatly appreciate it. And also click the notification bell as well. And also, someone told me you haven't gotten your significant other any flowers for Valentine's Day yet, right? Is that true? Like you really haven't at all? All right, I'm going to help you out here. Chatsports.com forward slash flowers. Use, uh, there is no promo code because there's 15% off your order right now. Chatsports.com forward slash flowers. Links in the description. Get them for your mom. Get them for your girlfriend. Get them for your sister. I know she would love it. You don't get your sister a lot of gifts. She'd still like it. It's not weird. Just be, just be nice, right? Mom, sister, girlfriend, wife, whatever it is. Chatsports.com forward slash flowers. I can get 15% off your order because Valentine's Day, guess what? is the 14th, which is this week. So do it now, and they'll be there by Valentine's Day. It'll be great, I promise you. From one guy to another, they will appreciate it, and you'll appreciate it too. Final bit of news here. This is interesting. Uh, I was reading up on the post-Super Bowl comments from both teams, and apparently the Chiefs think the 49ers' interception, the second one of Patrick Mahomes, sparked their comeback. I know, it's weird, but so, like, remember... Two interceptions of Patrick Mahomes in this game. The latter one came later on in the second half. That made it, a, it essentially was a 20 to 10 game right after that happened. And everyone thought in the building, including myself, we were going to win the Super Bowl. Remember that? Yeah, I don't want to bring up any bad uh, memories. Well, apparently, all of the 49er defensive players going into the end zone and celebrating that interception triggered and uh, fueled the Chiefs. Now, this quote comes via Harrison Butker, who's the kicker. So I don't know if you can take this as to heart. I mean, kickers are people too, right? But I don't think he's the real, uh, you know, overall arching voice on this. But he said, quote, that probably being the interception and celebration helped to our advantage that they were celebrating so much. And I think they probably let their guard down a little bit. When you have Patrick Mahomes and our offense, you know, we're going to score quick, which we did. Defense did a great job. And before they knew it, we were up four and then we're up 11. But that was kind of sticking in my mind. So, I mean, what do we do with that? Like, I don't care. Okay. Like, is it, is that, is, was the cheap comeback really fueled because they celebrated? Like, if that was the case, then every time a team had beaten the Chiefs or was leading the Chiefs this year, it was a celebration that fueled them. Maybe the 49ers let their guard down a little bit, but I just don't see uh, Kyle Shanahan and Robert Sala letting their players get that excited when you're only up 10 against Patrick Mahomes. It's a bitter, it's a bitter thing to think about, but I just wanted to see if you guys agree with me on that. So comment down below. Do you think the celebration hurt? Like, did we celebrate too early in the fourth quarter of Super Bowl 54? If you think we did, let me know. If you think we didn't, let me know as well. I'm going to read through those and like them on my personal page. I don't think it was a big deal. I think there are a lot of other factors, you know, the, the, the play calling. 
in the second half, the time management at the end of the first half. I mean, there's a lot of other things that factored into 49ers losing the Super Bowl, but I do promise that's going to be the last time we talk about the San Francisco 49ers losing Super Bowl 54 because it's the offseason. Rumors, draft stuff, news, everything is here, and we're looking into the future when we're going to win a Super Bowl, not back it whenever we lost a Super Bowl because I know that's a sensitive topic for all of us. So there we go. Quan Alexander saving us a bunch of money, restructuring $10 million. Robert Sala says no, Sparty. You guys are probably going to get uh, uh, academic violations and stuff. We'll stay away from uh, Michigan State. Defending of Jimmy Garoppolo by our head coach. And then, of course, Harrison Bucker, the kicker, mentioning that it was, you know, those celebrations, those darn celebrations is what fueled us. I don't know. A little bit ridiculous for me, but we'll take what the uh, what the people say to heart overall and take it at face value. There you go. For Chat Sports, that is the 49ers Report. We're doing a ton of great stuff this week, so be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that, as we always do. Really appreciate you guys, and we'll see you guys in the next video. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.